This video is brought to you by Audible. What are SpaceX's plans for Boca Chica, Texas? Will there ever be orbital Starship launches out of the South Texas site? And what are Elon Musk's long-term plans for the SpaceX Starship sea launch platform? Let's find out. What about it? Go for launch. Or go for launch. Let's light this candle. Ignition sequence start. My name is Felix, and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates Number 150 SpaceX is what you can call a fast-moving company when it comes to reaching goals and advancing their fields of work. They are making headlines that go around the globe. They are thinking big in the very meaning of the words. This is the SpaceX South Texas launch site as seen through RGB aerial photography's lens. Stitched together from 30 different images, it gives a perfect overview of the current status of the construction happening right now. Starting with a new wall foundation towards the sea, the first interesting site is the new fuel farm. We have the round concrete foundations, then the large fuel farm. After that comes the small construction tent, which most likely is just a temporary building. Then comes the orbital launch mount, which is in hibernation mode right now, seemingly with no construction going on. It's unclear if SpaceX will change it again or keep going with the construction. Right next to it we have a piling machine, driving down six new rebar tubes for a deep foundation. Purpose still unknown. Then comes the large landing pad and there's some good news here. It's done. SpaceX has added a second layer of thick rebar and forced concrete on top to make it withstand impacts from the currently not-so-soft Starship landing attempts. Then comes the more finished looking part of the site, Test Tank SN 7.2. SpaceX is still working on it, another test is very likely, we'll see if the 3mm steel can do the job and reduce the weight of future Starship hulls. Further to the right we see Test Pad B and next to it the construction site in the distance. Then, of course, test pad A with Starship SN10 on it and the current fuel farm in the back behind it. Starship SN10 is the next prototype to try and complete a flight including a landing. But before that can be done, a static fire has to be passed without issues. Right after the static fire was done on February 24th though, Elon Musk tweeted that one of the engines is sus. We have an imposter among us. Fast to react as always, Musk also tweeted this wonderful night shot saying that the engine swap was already underway, ready to go for yet another static fire. One Raptor engine got removed during daytime even before Musk took his picture at the launch site. To shed at least some light on the engine swap, Mary from NASA Spaceflight was able to take this picture of Raptor engine 43 at the construction site. This might be the engine that was acting up during the static fire. Mary, as always, was on site to film the replacement engine arriving on site. Thank you, Mary, you rock. The serial number is unknown, but it is one of those engines with that distinctive green coating on the bell. Here, for example, we have Raptor engine serial number 52, which arrived at the construction site on February 23rd, the same day that Starship SN10 went through the engine swap. Its engine bell is of a dark grey color. It's unknown as to why some engines have a green bell and others are like 52. It might just be protective coating, but it still raises the question why some Raptor engines receive this coating and others don't. Where do you think this color difference comes from? Tell me in the comments. On we go with some more news about the construction plan for the launch site and SpaceX's expansion. On my last episode I gave an in-depth analysis as to what SpaceX has already done to expand the launch site and what might be their plan for the future. We figured out by now that all the pipe plumbing between the orbital launch mount and Highway 4 can only mean one thing. There will definitely be a fuel farm there. We also found that those four circular concrete foundations being built right now do not have any underlying plumbing system. I brought up the idea that they might be connected to the planned Starship staging area. My friend Mauricio from RGV Aerial Photography doubled down on it and tried to get at least some information from the local workforce. And he got an answer. Some workers confirmed to him that the site indeed is the location of the new fuel farm SpaceX is building for the orbital launch mount. 
Looking at Mauricio's aerial view again, those four circular foundations are well visible. But what exactly are they for? Liquid oxygen? Liquid methane? Liquid nitrogen? Or maybe water? There's one clue I already picked up on the last episode. They are about the same diameter as a starship hull. So starship ring segments would fit onto them perfectly. SpaceX could just build water tanks themselves from starship ring segments. Is there any more information we could look at to get a better idea of what SpaceX is up to? What you're looking at here is a leaked document from the FAA. It was published by Business Insider on January 28th, so a month ago. The graphic is part of a whole document and you can find a link to it in the description. To sum it up, in this document SpaceX is proposing up to 8 orbital launches per year out of Boca Chica. They are also proposing rapid launches as a support for lunar resupply missions. They are proposing not one, but two orbital launch mounts, two new tank farms and a desalination plant on site. Each launch pad has a 150 meter tall integration tower and the proposed payload processing facility has a base foundation of 2045 square meters and is 73 meters tall. That could be the already built high bay as 2045 square meters comes down to roughly 45 by 45 meters, which fits the building. By date, the draft document is older than the one I showed on the last episode, but it also is a draft and what SpaceX is building right now looks a lot more like what is shown in the draft document and not so much like what's shown here. Everything just makes more sense. The fuel farm we talked about on the last episode is in the right place. The redundant Starship test pad B next to the old fuel farm is in the picture. The graphic has much more to show though. A second orbital launch mount named Pad B, a second fuel farm to support the additional launch mount, an air separation unit, a desalination plant and a huge crane assembly and vehicle integration space. Looking at RTV Aerial's latest flyby, we can already see a small building in exactly the spot where SpaceX proposes the desalination plant. As seen on the proposal, a groundwater and injection well would feed it. Looking at Mauricio's view again, some pipes can be spotted in exactly the location where SpaceX proposes the well. And yet another clue is the location of the vehicle support tower of the proposed launch mount named Pad B. Now, if the layout for Pad B is the same as for Pad A, SpaceX has been driving some deep foundation piles into the ground right next to the existing orbital launch mount. This might be for one of the vertical support structures. Looking at figure 26 from the draft document, we can see an aerial view of the two sites and the blue line represents the underground utility distribution. SpaceX proposes trenching along Highway 4 to connect an upgraded solar farm to the launch site. Looking at Mauricio's aerial view again, these would be the spots where SpaceX proposed the solar farm upgrade. If all this still is SpaceX's plan, the launch site right now is about half the size of what it will be once this construction phase is finished and we might be in for up to 8 orbital launches per year out of Boca Chica. The scope of the South Texas launch facility is growing and growing. Next up, we're going to take a look at the sea launch platform again as there have been some very interesting details surfacing lately. The Y family needs your support. Give the video a like, subscribe and share it with your friends on Twitter or Facebook to show the YouTube algorithm that you appreciate the content. Gain access to our Discord server where you can meet me and the rest of the team or get a completely ad-free release of each and every episode provided just for members. Or do you know about the Y warehouse? Shop for your next Starship shirt and look as awesome as you feel. Links can be found in the description. You rock! Sea launch platform update. So Elon Musk has been busy on Twitter again, giving us some details about the upcoming SpaceX sea launch platforms under construction right now and I am taking the opportunity to give you a clearer view as to what we can expect in the coming months with the help of an awesome animation from Nick Henning. This is one of two SpaceX sea launch platforms currently under construction. You're looking at Deimos as seen through RGV aerial photography's lens on February 19th. So a week ago, it appears to be dormant. Not much is going on here right now. This is about to change though and according to Elon Musk, sooner than later. Musk was asked by Toby Lee on Twitter how long we'd have to wait until the two rigs would be operational. And Musk replied that one of them may be in limited operation by the end of this year. Alright, he said maybe, but still it is the first official word as to what the time frame for construction looks like. 10 months to go until we have limited operation. 
first test flights? It certainly sounds like a steep goal. I expected them to take longer to rebuild the platforms and change their purpose from oil drilling to launching starships, but never say never. Musk also gave an insight as to how SpaceX will transfer their starships from their land-based facilities in Boca Chica out to the sea launch platforms and where the platforms will be stationed. They will fly there from our launch site and the platforms will be stationed around the world. Reading between the lines, this reveals another clue. This picture of unknown origin surfaced two days ago. It shows SpaceX's facility at Kennedy Space Center's Roberts Road. In his tweet, Musk says they will fly there from our launch site. Singular. Originally intended for Starship production and launch support, Musk's intent to pull SpaceX out of California might be taking shape here right now. These facilities might be for Falcon 9 construction, refurbishment and maintenance. Furthermore, Musk says that the sea launch platforms will be stationed around the world, confirming again that Deimos and Phobos are just two platforms of many to come in the future. They are prototypes for a whole fleet of sea launch platforms. Let's use the opportunity and do an update and an in-depth explanation of a possible design. How could SpaceX turn these sea-based launch platforms into reality? As a friendly reminder up front, what you will see now is highly speculative. All of this is a fictional design idea and not confirmed by SpaceX. This is the brainchild of Nick Henning and me and we're trying to show a possible design in advance. Something to give you an idea, something to sweeten the waiting time and something to make you think. So let's dive right in. To clear up some questions regarding the concept, let's go through the components step by step together and have a look at the details. We're starting our tour with the fuel storage. Connected by plumbing and with fueling connectors on the outside, the system now is as deeply as possible integrated into the existing platform to save space. Being the heart of the support structure and to lower the center of gravity for the whole platform, we decided to move a lot of the tanks into the existing structure. As there already are tanks in the four large pillars on an ENSCO 8500, we utilized this space for the fuel farm. The floating structure below is largely left unchanged as it would need a dry dock to get work done here and we don't expect SpaceX to do that. On we go with the support structure. It has two jobs. Link the pontoons together and support the weight of the main deck. In our case we made the main deck larger, so we added a few more support beams. Next we had the structure below the main deck. We kept it simple here to save weight. Connections between the deck buildings and the launch support structure and some storage space. That's it. Then comes the main deck. We made it quite a bit larger as we just can't see SpaceX launch and land starships and super heavy boosters on the original deck size, which would be much smaller. Again, this is speculation and SpaceX might not do this after all. We'll have to wait and see. On we go with the landing pads. We added two of them, as SpaceX wants to land starships that come in from their production facility in Boca Chica, and as boosters and starships returning from orbit and from point to point travel locations would want to land frequently as well. To raise the launch cadence capability, two pads would be optimal. Then comes one of the most important steps, the launch mounts. Again, we've opted for two to raise the launch cadence capabilities. The center one dedicated to full stack orbital launches with super heavy boosters and a starship, the smaller one for point to point travel. And this is one of the major changes from our last version, an exhaust ramp. If SpaceX wants to put buildings on the deck, they need to somehow be protected from the blast of 28 Raptor engines when a super heavy booster launches right next to it. This way, any flames or exhaust gases would be reflected upwards and away from any kind of structure on this side of the main deck. And here's the safety part. Four lifeboats for a maximum of 120 people to be evacuated in case of an emergency. Located close to the buildings and behind the exhaust ramp, they would provide the much needed escape route in case of a pad anomaly. Of course, the sea launch platform also needs buildings. We decided to put two structures on the deck. A maintenance slash launch control building and a passenger building. We're not sure if SpaceX will actually put structures on the main deck, but this way and including the exhaust ramp, it would be possible. Have a cool drink before embarking to Mars. Then comes the fuel umbilical. Below the deck, it is directly connected to the fuel farm and it is, of course, responsible for fueling operations before a launch. Last but not least, we have the giant launch support structure. We're still not sure if this is feasible on the rig in this form, but SpaceX will need one. 
The height can't be reduced much and on the inside it would mostly be a hollow girder structure to save as much weight as possible again to reduce the center of mass of the whole structure. That's it, our idea of a SpaceX sea launch platform. And since according to Elon Musk Starships will fly to the sea launch platform from the construction site, here's serial number X coming in freshly designed and built in Boca Chica, Texas. Only one of many to come and go on a daily basis. Think big. This is an ongoing concept that will likely see changes in the future as more and more details surface, but it gives you a good overview for a possible solution. Tell us how you liked it or if there is anything you'd add in the comments. Over the course of my YouTube career, I've heard one question many times. How do I know so much about space? A great source to learn more about it is Audible and there's one title in particular that I'd like to recommend to you today. It's called The Space Race and you can listen to it for free only on Audible. Published in 2019 and narrated by Emmy Award and Golden Globe nominee Kate Mulgrew, it tells the race to the moon from a very unique angle. I was strolling on the moon one day. It seems like the beginning of a great adventure. And as we leave the moon and tours literal, we leave as we came, and God willing, as we shall return. But since those final words, spoken by Apollo 17 commander Gene Cernan, no one has been back. Kate Mulgrew, also known as Captain Janeway from the Star Trek franchise, manages to take you on a fascinating journey, leading from Virgin Galactic's space program in the Mojave Desert all the way back into the 60s, featuring interviews with Buzz Aldrin, Gene Cernan, Sergei Krikalev and numerous other key players at Mission Control. And being an Audible original, it's only available on Audible. By the way, if you're not familiar with Audible, this might be the right time to crawl out from under your rock. They are the premier audiobook service on the web. Thousands of amazing titles narrated by the authors themselves or a well-known actor. Extremely easy to access through the app on any smartphone or tablet. Podcasts, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances, A-list comedy and exclusive Audible originals you won't find anywhere else. I know, it's often hard to find the time to read throughout your day, but Audible is something you can do on the go. Visit audible.com slash y or text y to 500, 500 to support What About It and start your free 30-day trial. See what listening to Audible can do for you. Today's supporter shoutout goes to Wesley, Shees and many others. Without you and all the other supporters, what about it would not be possible. Thank you for your support, enjoy today's ad-free release and don't forget to join us on the Y Discord server. I'm looking forward to thanking you in person. Today's team shoutout goes to Sunny, yet another member on our ever-growing website squad. He's working with the team to turn our website into a community hub and a one-stop solution for Starship and Spaceflight fans. Thank you and you rock. We can see an early, early, growing and growing next with the help of an oil drilling to launch Starship. To launch Starship. It shows SpaceX's facility. <laughs> Outside, the system now is deeply... <laughs> Alright, give me a second. The floating structure below is largely left on... <laughs> the largely... The floating structure below is largely... Largely... <laughs> the floating structure below... <laughs>